Hey everybody, a few months back I did a video here on my channel where I talk about what VLANs or virtual LANs are all about, kind of describe how they work, and I promised I'd do a follow-up video where I actually configure a few network switches with VLAN capability, and well, I'm just now getting around to it, so I apologize for the long delay. If this is the first video you're watching, you probably want to take a few minutes and go back and watch my other video on VLANs to become familiar with kind of the overall concept of how they work as well as the terminology that I'm going to be using as I'm setting these switches up. So a link should be popping up to that video right about now. And if, again, if you have not watched that or if you need a refresher, I would recommend going and watching that first before you proceed with this one. In front of me, I've got three network switches and I'm going to configure all three of these with some VLAN, VLAN capability. Uh, I have a Netgear. This is a GS108PE. This is a TP-Link TLSG108PE. And then this is a Zyxel, I believe I'm saying that right, GS1900-10HP. And then after I get all those configured, I'm going to kind of go over briefly the network switch configuration I have in my video production trailer. So basically, I'm going to configure all three of these things to be functionally exactly the same. And I've got conf configuration kind of put together here. And I'll bring that in view with the camera. I'm going to be doing four VLANs. Uh, VLAN ID 1 is going to be kind of the admin and main network. VLAN 11 comes from my video production trailer, and that is actually available uh, on the network connection I'm going to be using here. VLAN 61 is going to be for audio, which is my Dante network. And then 101 is just going to be internet only. It's not really going to be a whole LAN in and of itself. It's just LAN traffic coming directly from the router from my ISP. So... I'll configure all of those. Um, I'm going to set this up where VLAN, I, VLAN 1 is going to be untagged, and then the other three are going to be tagged. And then in terms of the ports on the switches, all for, in, all, in all three of these cases, I'm going to have ports 1 and 8 be admin trunk ports, which basically carry all of the traffic for all the different VLANs uh, combined into one. That's why we call it a trunk. And then ports 2 and 3 are going to be audio. Port 4 is going to be the LAN from my trailer. Ports 5 and 6 are going to be the main LAN, and then port 7 is going to be just internet. And I'll, as I go, I'll plug in this laptop that I've got here into those networks. You can see that they really are different networks, even though they are coming off of the same physical switch. Um, one, of the one of the reasons I'm doing admin trunk on ports 1 and 8 instead of having those consolidated, that's just going to be for, for visual uh, clarity as I cascade from one switch to the next. So I'll have my main network from my home coming in on port one of this one, port eight of this going to port one on this, and then port eight of this going over to port one on this, and that'll just keep the cabling a little bit neater as we go. With that, let's dive right in and, and uh, make this happen. So let me describe a little bit about what's going on here. So this gray cable right here is actually connected to my local area network here in my home. It goes to a managed switch that I have in my basement. And this is carrying traffic for well, the four VLANs we're going to be working with here today, plus a few others that we won't be concerning ourselves with. But it's a trunk connection, essentially. So the admin main VLAN is untagged, so basically it doesn't have a VLAN ID. I'm going to call it 1 as when working with it here today, but it's, it is untagged, so it doesn't have a number associated with it. And then the other three networks that we're going to be working with are, are tagged coming in on this port. So the audio is tagged with 61. The, the trailer is tagged with 11, and my internet connection is tagged with 101. These switches right now are configured in just basically factory, reset, brand new configuration. As such, they're ignoring the VLAN tags that are coming in. So if you were to inspect the traffic that's coming out of the other ports after it goes through the switch, it doesn't ha it's not going to have any of that tagged traffic. It's just going to be the main untagged VLAN 1, as I'm, as I'm calling it, traffic and nothing else. So even though that traffic is on this cable, if we were to inspect it coming out of the, the ports on the switch, those won't be there because we haven't told these switches how to deal with that just yet. So that's going to be the first thing we need to do is we're going to need to configure these these switches for to be able to talk to the different VLANs and be able to know what to do with the VLAN tag traffic that's coming in. And we'll segregate different ports as we as I discussed earlier to make sure that the network for those or the traffic for each of those networks is separate on different ports and we can break it up and use it as we need. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and log in to the 
Netgear, one Netgear switch that I have right in front of me. All right, so in this particular switch, it has the VLAN configuration under its own tab. So we're just gonna go ahead and click on that. And then from there, we're gonna want to go and select the 802.1Q. And that is the technical name for the type of VLAN that we're gonna be using. And we want the advanced capability. So I want you to understand conceptually what's going on here. So it can be done, a lot of this can be done with the basic functionality, but I wanna really go into advanced so that it's really clear what's going on. So from there, I'm gonna click on VLAN configuration. And then I need to turn on advanced 802.1Q VLAN. So I'll click on enable. And there we go. So now it's popping up and showing a list of the VLANs that are already configured, which in this case is just VLAN 1. That's the factory, the factory defaults for this. And what we need to do is we need to add the other VLANs that we're going to be using. So in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and type in. So the first one I'm going to do is VLAN 11. So I'm going to type in VLAN ID there and I click on the Add button. I don't know why they separated it the way that they did, but that's what they did. So I'm going to add 61 and then I'm going to add 101. Now that just tells the switch that we're going to be using those VLAN numbers. It doesn't do anything for configuring them, telling it how to, how, to, how to deal with that traffic. And so we're going to have to do that next. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over here to VLAN membership. And from there, we're going to be able to choose which ports are members of each particular VLAN. So uh, as I talked about in the previous video, each port can be tagged or untagged. Most of the ports we're going to be dealing here are untagged, but the two ports that I want to have be part of the admin and main network, those are going to be trunk ports so that I can cascade the traffic from one switch to the next. So I want to have multiple VLANs on a single port, and in order to do that, I'm going to have to configure those ports uh, correctly to make sure that we're dealing with the traffic in the way that we need to. So the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and tell this switch that uh, for VLANs 11, 61, 101, that I want to include tagged traffic on ports one and eight. It's basically saying the traffic coming in for, for VLAN 11 is gonna be tagged. And we want to let the device know that we want to receive that traffic, retain the tag, and we want to send outgoing traffic with that tag intact so that when it gets to the next switch that we're communicating with, whether that be the one that I have here in my home in my basement or the next one we're gonna connect in series, that we retain those tags as that traffic is leaving the port and egress is what we call that. So I'm gonna have tag port for ports 11, um, for VLAN 11 on ports one and eight. For VLAN 11, we also want to have port four be part of that network and we want that to be untagged so that that traffic can be recognized by a computer or whatever device we want to hook up to that port. So I'm going to set that port as untagged there. All right, so we're going to apply that and then we're going to go to VLAN 61. Again, we want to tag for ports one and eight and then audio, which is network 61 is going to be untagged on ports two and three, basically saying we want this traffic to exit that port but we need it to be regular v regular network traffic. We don't want to be want, don't want it to have a VLAN tag because devices don't know what to do with that. So we're removing that tag as it exits that port. So from there, I'm gonna go ahead and click on apply on that one. That will save the settings for network 61. And then I'm gonna configure a network 101, which we're going to put on port seven. But again, we have to include that traffic on ports one and eight so we can communicate with other switches v that are support VLANs. And then we're going to do untagged on port seven. Now we're not done yet. And so it seems like we've, we've configured the device to know how to talk to the different ports on the switch uh, with the different VLANs, but there's actually more to it than more, more than what we have to do here. So as I mentioned in my previous video, when traffic comes into the port, it's not going to have a tag associated with it. And we want, if we want that traffic to go to a specific VLAN, we're going to have to tell the switch what tag to include with that with that packet so that it knows where it needs to go and the way we do that is with the port pvid setting so i'm going to click on that here on the left and then we're going to be changing the pvid for each one of the different ports ports one and eight those i'm going to leave those on vlan one like basically uh, any traffic coming in that's untagged we want to retain on vlan one so that will stay the same and that will also stay on five and six because i'm going to configure those ports to be part of my main network as well 
What I need to change though is I need to change two and three because those are part of my audio network, which is VLAN 61. So I'll, I'll check the boxes here and then I'm going to type in 61 as part of the PVID. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on apply. And then I need to change port four to use VLAN 11. And then I need to change port seven to, to use 101. So there we go. So and that should line up with the port configuration that I've predefined on the sheet of paper here. So port ports one, five, six, and eight are all uh, on VLAN one, and then ports two and three on VLAN sixty one, port four on VLAN eleven, and then port seven on one hundred one. And so it looks like that's what we've got here. All right, there's one more thing that I need to do here is I need to remove these ports, these extra, extra ports from VLAN number one. So I'm going to go back over here to VLAN membership, and then I'm going to turn off all of the ports that are not meant to be on VLAN one. So that's going to be two, three, four, and seven. And then I click apply. That should be able to save that setting. And at this point, in theory, we should have this switch dividing up that traffic based on the different ports. And one way we can find that, and what we can do to figure out if that's actually the case, is I'm gonna take this connection here, and I'm gonna plug this into port two, which is, should be audio, and then on the computer here, come over here into Dante controller, bingo! Now I'm seeing a lot of the Dante devices that are in my trailer. And for example, if I want to, I can take the audio output of my Yamaha TF3 mixer, and I'll route that to Dante Via on this laptop. Let me open that up again here. So we'll take stereo left, stereo right, map those to this laptop. And as I do so, we actually get audio from the tray we're playing through my laptop. And so that that way I know that my audio network is actually working properly. That network traffic is coming in over the trunk on the main port or the first port here on this switch. And then it's broken out into its individual VLAN here on port two and then coming over to the laptop. And that is working just fine. So with that, we can actually move on to the next switch. In order to do that, I need to make a connection. I'll grab a cable here. All right, I know you can't see it, but we're seeing network activity lights on those. And from there, I'm gonna log into the web interface for this TP-Link. All right, so we'll take a look at the web interface here on the TP-Link, and we're gonna go here to the VLAN section on this one. So in this VLAN interface, if we wanna add a new VLAN here, we're gonna come up here and we're gonna type in the VLAN ID, which in this case is gonna be 11. We're gonna want this to be the DJP network. We do have the option of giving it a name here, so I'm gonna type that into this name field. And then we need to assign it to the ports that need to be able to communicate with that VLAN. So we're gonna assign ports one and eight as tagged. Again, we want to preserve that VLAN tag when communicating with other switches so that that traffic can be separate from everything else. And then VLAN uh, 11 is gonna be on port four as untagged so that a connected device will be able to actually understand that traffic and not be confused by the VLAN tag. With that, we're gonna click on add modify and that's gonna add that to the list here at the bottom. And then we're gonna go ahead and add VLAN 61, which is audio one. Again, tagged on ports one and eight, and then untagged on ports two and three. Click on add modify. And then we need to add port VLAN 101. So we'll type that into the VLAN ID. This one's just internet. Helps if you can spell it right. Again, tagged on one and eight, and then that's going to be untagged on port seven, so add modify. And then we're gonna to need to remove VLAN one from all the ports that don't need it. So I'm just gonna type in VLAN ID one there, and you can see the untagged is selected for all of those, but we don't want the other ones to be a member. So two, three, four, we want to remove as members. Five and six, we do want to be members. Seven, we do not. And then I'll go, again, I'll click add modify. And that should be it in terms of assigning the ports to be tagged, untagged, or not a member of each one of the, v the VLANs. Again, the other thing we have to do here is we have to assign the PVIDs so the incoming traffic that doesn't have a VLAN tag gets assigned the proper VLAN tag. So in order to do that, 
I'm going to go over to the 802.1Q PBID setting. And here we're going to check boxes for ports 2 and 3. Again, this is going to be VLAN 61, so I'll type that in and then type apply. And then 4 is going to be on 11, so click on port 4, type, whoops, type in 11, say apply. 5 and 6 are already on 1, so we don't need to change that. Then port 7 needs to be on 101, so we'll type that in and then click apply. Okay, all right, and with that, in theory, we should have access to the audio and the internet networks on the second switch here. So I'm going to take my audio cable, unplug it from the first switch, and plug it into port 2 on the second switch. Because again, that should be assigned as an audio port. And if everything's working right, come over here into Dante Controller. Yes, and there we go. We're seeing the devices come in because uh, that network is part of that. Now, if you want to, if you want some, some proof that it's this port is treated differently than some of the others, I'm going to take that cable, remove that, plug that into port 4, which is my network within my trailer, the LAN. And then you can see in the Dante controller that no devices are showing up because there's no Dante traffic on my network there. All right, and then the other thing we can do here is we can actually go into settings. And go to network and internet. And we'll take a look at that, that particular network adapter. So if I click on properties, IP settings, yeah, there we go. So this has an IP address that corresponds to my network in my trailer. Not my Dante network, not my LAN here at the house. It is indeed an IP address that belongs to just my trailer. Correspondingly, if I take and unplug this and move it over to port 7, which is my internet, it will get an IP address on yet a different subnet entirely. So I'll wait a few seconds, and then we'll plug that in. So we take a look at that, and bingo, it has an IP address in an entirely different subnet. So yeah, the, the VLAN feature on these switches is working. The networks are separate, even though it is the same physical switch. Okay, with that, I'm going to connect up the Zyxel switch, and we'll do the same thing on that. All right, here we've got the web interface for the Zyxel switch, and we're going to go ahead and over, go over into configuration in order to set this thing up, and we're going to go into VLAN. Now, I want to mention that this switch actually does have a wizard for setting up VLANs, but it doesn't do it, doesn't do it thoroughly, and so I've just basically stopped trying to use it because it, it, doesn't, it only does half the job. And so I will always use the manual configuration in order to make this, make this work. So, so we're going to go with configuration VLAN and then VLAN, and this one only has 802.1Q, so we don't need to specify that as the, as the type. But from here, we're gonna go ahead and add the extra VLANs. So we'll say add VLAN 11, this is called DJP. Go ahead and apply. And another one, 61 audio apply. Add 101 internet apply. Okay, so now we have the four VLANs that we actually need and now we need to assign the, the various ports. So I'll go ahead and click on port over here. All right. And then I'm going to check ports two and three and click on edit. And I'm going to set the PVID here. So these are going to be the audio. So that is going to be PVID 61. And we want to have untag only. And we're going to go to port four. I'm going to edit that one. Port 4 is going to be on VLAN 11. Untag only. Apply. Port 5 and 6. Those are going to be on VLAN 1. Untag only. So the untag only option that we're not set, that we're not actually assigning uh, the port for outgoing traffic. This is for filtering ingoing, incoming traffic. It's just an extra security precaution that we can do. So I'm going to go, so I'm going to select, uh, so now I'm going to select port 7. We're going to tell it that, that is VLAN 101. Again, we want untag only. Click, click on apply. And then we can do ports 1 and 8. PVID on 1 
is one. We want all all types, tagged and untagged, to be accepted uh, in ta ingress filtering and VUN trunk. We want to be enabled because we're that actually is a trunk connection where we have multiple VUNs going on at the same time. All right. So then we're going to come over here to VUN port, and this is where we're going to assign which VUNs go to which port. So I'll start with VUN one. We only want that to be part uh, to be assigned to ports one, five, six, and eight. And for one and eight, again, we want those to be tagged. And then five and six, we want to be untagged. And then we want to set, change the other ports so that they are excluded. So we'll say for ports two, three, four, and seven, we want those to be excluded from VUN one. So we go ahead and click on apply. All right, and then I'm gonna choose a VUN 11. And this one, we need to be tagged on one and eight as we have with everything else. And then we want to have port four be untagged and the others excluded. So I'll get to put that in there and click on apply. VUN 61, again, tagged for one and eight untagged for two and three and excluded for everything else. So I'll go ahead and click on apply for that. And then the last one, VUN 101, tagged for one and eight, and then untagged for port seven. Click on apply. And then at this point, I'm going to want to click on the save button here in the upper right in order for that to take effect. Now, if I've done this properly, I should be able to move the LAN cable over to port two on that switch and be able to see audio for my Dante network. And there it is. My Dante devices are now showing up on the computer because the audio VLAN traffic is coming in on that port that I'm plugged into, port two on the Zyxel switch. So, so that's the basics of it here. So we need to, what we need to essentially need to do is we need to tell the switches which VLANs are assigned to which ports. We need to make sure that we assign those either as tagged or untagged based on whether we want that VLAN tag to be preserved as that traffic is leaving the network port or excluded if, it's, if it, we don't want that traffic on that port. And then we need, need to assign the PVID for a VLAN tag number for any untagged traffic that's coming into the switch. There are some other advanced, advanced options, like what, for example, in the Zyxel, we had the option to actually filter some of the incoming traffic, and uh, the other ones did not. So depending on which model of switch you have, how, how fancy it is, what uh, level of uh, features are included, you may or may not see those options in yours. So that basically does it for these. The only th other thing that I wanted to do is show you how I have my switch in my trailer configured. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this cable over to port four on this switch because that is my trailer uh, LAN and we'll be able to see what's going on by doing so. All right, so I am now connected to my trailer LAN uh, by plugging into port five on the switch. And with that, I can actually log into my switch ten said the 10.1.8.2 so that is there we go so this is this the network switch i have in my trailer so even though it's not in the trailer i have access to it here because it's going through the vlans that i have in my switches along the way and what i can do over here is come over to the vlan tab and you can see that i have a lot more vlans in my trailer than i do with this little network that i've been working with here but I've got VLAN 11, which is the trailer local area network. There's VLAN 61 for my Dante traffic. There's 101 for my internet traffic. And then the, the traffic that I have for my LAN here at my home is available on VLAN 3. So I'm actually taking advantage of the fact that you can strip a tag when it leaves a switch and then assign it a new tag when it enters a switch. So in my local area network here at my house, the, my local VLAN is actually 3. Uh, and but I'm having it come into these switches here on one, again, by using the untag feature. But if I want to see what's going on with one of these, for example, I'll pull up my audio one. So I'll go into edit on this one. So you can see here that I've actually got the, my Dante network assigned to various ports. Uh, and some are untagged, some are tagged. The untagged ones are ones that are connected directly to a device in the trailer. Say, for example, my a Yamaha audio mixer, that's going to be one of these untagged ports. And it also goes to any switches that 
are only used for Dante. Uh, I have to have one switch like that in my trailer. In that point, case, I, I do use Untag. That way I'm able to use an inexpensive, unmanaged switch in order to talk to all of those devices. I just have it set up where the tra all of the traffic coming out of that port is strictly for Dante only. But if we look down a little bit further here, we've got the tagged ports. And these are all network ports that go to managed switches that understand VLAN tags. And so I'm able to preserve that tag 61 for any of my audio traffic as it travels throughout the network within the trailer and also to the switch that I set up on site when I happen to be working for a working in a venue for a client. So if you look here, I've got ports 49 and 50. Those are the ports that go to my fiber optic cable uh, that gets run inside of the venue. And so that way, because it's tagged, it's be able to include it, be included on that fiber cable and then be broken out as separately as part of connecting into another network switch that I have that's also managed and supports VLAN tags there as well. So anyway, I know it's kind of overwhelming, uh, but all the information you need to configure one of these devices is here, although it's going to vary from one device to the next on how you actually accomplish that. So you're going to want to consult the manufacturer's documentation for your particular model of switch in order to, in order to do this properly. But again, though, with the information in this video and the previous video, you should have the basics to be able to get started with VLANs, to be able to create separate networks within a single piece of equipment and be able to route traffic from one switch to another and preserve that VLAN tag so that things retain their isolation from one another as they travel from one switch to another. So there it is. That's going to about do it for today. So if you have any questions, you can leave those in the comment section down below. Or even better, uh, come over and join me and other members of the video production community over on Discord. A link to that is popping up on your screen right now. I will have a channel set up specifically for talking about networking related topics, specifically in this case VLANs. So if you have a question, you can uh, go to Discord and ask that question there in that channel and somebody will get back to you. And if you happen to be someone who has experience in this area, I'd love to have you there as well to try and answer some of the questions that are going to be coming in because I know there's going to be a bunch. VLANs are not something that seems to be very well understood in the video production community but can be very useful in helping you to simplify, actually simplify your network and allow you to get away with using fewer devices and give you a better view of what's going on within your network. So anyway, but thanks everybody for watching and have a fantastic day.